But let's start the programme with two highly lusted after sports cars. Mazda sold over 450,000 of the old RX-7 around the world, making it one of the most popular sports cars ever. Now there's this brand new model that bears an uncanny resemblance to the highly successful Porsche 924S. But can the Japanese possibly compete with the charisma of the German car, with its appeal simply as a status symbol? Russell Bray compares the two cars, both in terms of design and their performance. Most motorists would give their eye teeth to put this pair through their paces, and they would not be disappointed. Porsche motoring now starts with this new 924S, but breathing down its neck is the new Mazda RX-7. Both are cars which have grown up from humble beginnings to become genuine 130 mile an hour sports cars which deliver real thrills. The shape of the 924S looks familiar because it's been with us now for 10 years. The Mazda is brand new, sexier and slipperier. It looks something like the 924S might have done if Porsche had rethought the bodywork. But both cars are vastly different in the way they achieve their similar performance. Porsche gets its 150 brake horsepower from a 2.5 litre four-cylinder engine. It's 500cc larger than the previous engine used in this body shell. In fact, it's a detuned two-valve per cylinder version of that in the Porsche 944. But because four-cylinder engines suffer badly from vibration, Porsche fits balancer shafts to keep it running smoothly. Vibration is not a problem with a rotary engine which this is. In fact, they spin so freely, it's easy to over-rev them. Mazda produces 148 brake horsepower from this twin-rotor Wankel engine, which, despite its compact size, is equivalent to a 2.3-litre piston engine. After 20 years of development, Mazda has long ago cured any problems of rotor tip wear, but it still remains a thirsty power unit. The Mazda is longer, lower and wider, but only fractionally so. It has clever little windows in the bumpers to allow flashing of the headlamps when they're retracted. The Porsche flashes an extra pair of driving lamps instead. Both cars are labelled 2 plus 2s, but really the back seats would only suit legless dwarfs. The rotary engine revs extremely freely and has quite a nice sport and exhaust note. If you do make a slight mistake and rev it a little bit too hard, Mazda have even thought of that for you. There's a warning buzzer which tells you it's time to change up a gear. Thank you very much. The instruments are dominated by the big rev counter which is very clear to see, but unfortunately the steering wheel masks the oil pressure gauge and in a sports car that's something I'd like to be able to take a look at. The switch gear is a little bit unusual. It's grouped around the instrument binnacle, but it's very easy to use. There's a switch on your right hand side for the indicators and one on the left for the wipers. Most of the controls are rotary, but you don't need them too often, so that's not a problem. Suitable for the car, of course. On the top of the face here, there are some extra warning lights, which are nicely in the driver's line of sight. Mazda makes great play of its four-wheel steering, achieved by small automatic adjustments of its rear suspension, which the driver is not even aware of. Both cars are rear-wheel drive to give the driver more control over handling. The Porsche's gear change is only slightly slower despite its unusual transaxle design with the gearbox in the back linked to the engine in front. This achieves a near 50-50 weight distribution, the same Mazda manages by mounting the rotary well back in the RX-7 chassis. This Porsche has a slightly softer ride than the RX-7, which only makes the best use of its wider Bridgestone tyres on really smooth surfaces. Sports cars are about performance, and the Mazda delivers the goods, though because of its heavy weight, it's not as fast off the line as you might think. We're now up to 40 miles an hour, and it's accelerating well in second. There's the buzzer, and that's third. We're now doing the legal limit at 70, and as the car's aerodynamics improve, its acceleration continues. That's now the magic 100 miles an hour, and there's plenty more to come. There's 110. Wind noise building up a bit now. There's 120, and we're into fifth gear. But everything's going very smoothly. No drama. Straight line stability is excellent. In fact, the speedometer 
is showing 1.30 precisely. One area where the Porsche outguns the Mazda is fuel consumption. Mazda has improved the rotary over the years, but it's chasing a moving target. And the need for more power to make the car competitive with the Porsche means the new car guzzles more than the old. I'm genuinely surprised how hard I would find it to choose between the two. I suspect some people would willingly pay the extra to have that Porsche shield on their car, but in performance terms, barring that fuel thirst, there is little to choose between them. The Porsche should hold its value better in the second-hand market, I suppose, but you will really know the Mazda has arrived when you see a car with a sticker saying, my other car is an RX-7. The Mazda has an engine of 2,354cc compared with 2,479cc for the Porsche. The Mazda develops 148 brake horsepower and the Porsche 150. Acceleration to 60 for the Mazda is 8.2 seconds and 7.8 for the Porsche. The top speed of the Mazda is 132 miles an hour and 133 in the Porsche. The average fuel consumption of the Mazda is 25 miles to the gallon compared with 35 in the German car. The Mazda is in Insurance Group 7 and the Porsche in Insurance Group 8. The price of the Mazda is £13,995. The basic 924S Porsche is about £15,500, but the car we tested, fitted with extras, cost £18,016.